Sponsored by Bangta, Sustainable Business Development in Harmony with the Environment and Society. Siam Commercial Bank. Welcome to ASEAN One. We'll be presenting ASEAN aspects and perspectives in preparation for the coming ASEAN Economic Community in 2015. Every weekday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. in MCOT World True 99. And today, we'll be focusing on how to maximize the AEC opportunity in light of Thailand's investment environment and the challenges affecting business competitiveness. Stay tuned so you may need to have a wake-up call to bring up the best when the Austin economic community integrates and bear fruits in the upcoming years. All ASEAN countries, especially Thailand, have been urged to take strenuous steps to genuinely open up the regional market ahead of the economic integration due to fully take place in 2015, as there are still far too many non-tariff bars and restrictions hindering growth in the trade and services sector. A seminar on 2012 Thailand Investment Environment, Maximizing the AEC Opportunities, panelists deem that those involved in Thai trade, service and investment should be less concerned on protecting against a more intensive competitive environment under the AEC. Instead, they should be aware that they stand a chance of lagging behind business development caused by various rules and regulations obstructing investment and new businesses coming into the kingdom. By the continuation of minimizing trade barrier, develop roadmap on monetary and financial integration of the ASEAN community and creating a fair competition within the region must be encouraged. On the part of the business sector where Thai Commerce Minister Gun Bun Song Teriya Pirom gave confidence that it is on the top agenda of this current government. And what it means to Thailand. The world is changing quickly. And with economic uncertainties in the EU and the US, the challenges to maintain Thailand's economic growth and stability is the government's highest concern. I am sure it is what it is each of you in this room has in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe the AEC is an important part of Thailand's economic future. Therefore, supporting the ASEAN community is the central policy of this government. With the rise of China and India, and the promise of the prosperous Asia-Pacific century, ASEAN can play a key role in achieving levels of economic growth that would benefit the people of the region and, of course, the people of Thailand. ASEAN's combined population of over 600 million people and a total GDP of almost 2 trillion US dollars and foreign investments of up to 64 billion US dollars make ASEAN an attractive single market and production base. However, in order to ensure sustainable growth, there is a need to support liberalization of remaining sectors regarding trade in services, implement the agreement on classifications of goods in transit, and realize the goal of an ASEAN single window by this year. We also need to continue to minimize non-trade barriers and develop a roadmap on monetary and financial integrations of the ASEAN. And as ASEAN moves forward together to realize the IEC, it is important to maintain ASEAN unity and reduce economic gaps. Unity leads to market stability. Reducing these gaps will help lower poverty by enhancing purchasing power for all. In addition, I believe that in order for AAC to be successful, ASEAN must draw the comparative advantages of member states together to create both effective cooperation. Despite the facts that were mentioned by the Commerce Minister about the country's geographic status, according to the World Bank, Thailand is losing competitiveness, 
with or without the AEC. The World Bank senior economist pointed out that although income in the Thai industrial sector has grown continuously, but income in the service sector is notably sluggish when compared with other ASEAN member states, given the high level of protection in business service trade. Because of this, although Thailand and other ASEAN countries are committed to liberalizing the service sector and trade in goods, the fruits of the AEC's implementations would, in effect, be delayed. It has been noted that Thailand has long developed its services and trade sectors and should no longer protect the market, as the benefits of liberalization for its citizens will more than outweigh any impact on domestic enterprises. And this means to say Thai enterprises should not be afraid of or panic from losing opportunities under the AEC, but rather be afraid of losing out due to the lack of competitiveness among its colleagues. Once we expand our market base, if we still have the same rules and regulations and obstructing procedures, barring us from conducting business in a swift manner and complicating the processes, we will lose competitiveness. Right now, other countries do not have the complicated rules like us. They have more convenience and thus can be more competitive compared to when doing business in Thailand. If we don't eliminate these problems and increase more aids, they will become our shackles to progress, hindering us from our development capabilities. I really don't want to blame because there are laws that are meant for justice. In the past, they were used for control, but control in various situations, it becomes an obstacle. Doing business, you must do it fast. Control factors make operations in business require approval, and that could be time-consuming. Furthermore, business approval and control on the long term could also lead to corruption. The signs are still obscure right now. We think and believe that the direction for private and private entrepreneurs, civil servants all want to see flow in operations. But in the meantime, the system must also be able to protect us as well. No matter the issue be protecting the social rights, the law enforcement, it has to be done simultaneously. Sometimes our problems, if you are exposed to it briefly, it is not a big deal. But in the practical terms, it may be complicated. You need to ask people with first-hand experience of these issues. But really, if you want to fix it, again, it is not that difficult. According to the Trade Negotiations Department, Thailand has already opened up service sector in seven groups of businesses, well, although some of its fellow ASEAN countries have not opened up the same. Yes, you can pass around this because they have internal laws and regulations restricting the share of foreign enterprises in local companies and limiting the types of operation that can be undertaken by foreigners. Now let's go here. Uh, what the Director of the Trade and Services and Investment Bureau has to say about Thailand's preparedness on the part of Trade Negotiations Department. Right now, the negotiations concerning the ASEAN economic integration has been completed by 80 percent, while the integration is set to take place in two and a half years. This zero percent duty rates on imported products have been implemented through AFTA since 2010 for six ASEAN countries so far. As for the rest of all countries in the CLMV, should start to enjoy the benefits of this policy by the year 2015. The 0% tax is nothing new for the business sector, while the service sector is now in the middle of the negotiations. We have submitted the eighth commitment, which indicates that, that the ASEAN countries will have to be open for individuals to hold up to 70% of shares in four service sectors, including the telecommunication, the tourism, ICT, and air logistics. Meanwhile, we have been gradually submitting our commitment where we expect it to take effect by the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. This is in fact may be delayed from the blueprint's deadline, but it's okay as we keep in line with the block's readiness. 
I think we still have a group 9 and 10 of the service business sectors until we have completed the submissions of commitments. And as for the mobility of professions, we have already started proceeding with the mutual recognition arrangement or the MRA on engineering and architectural services, which for the meantime only recognizes a set of agreed qualification. Well, the stage of licensing has not been discussed, where all the member states still have their own rules and regulations. And at the same time, the RCN had discussed the movement of natural person agreement, which I believe would likely be succeeded by the end of this year. And on the topic of a more liberalized mobility of investment fund, which is under the supervision of the finance ministry, the trade negotiations department has already handed in the five sets of commitments. All 10 ASEAN countries would like to meet its pledges in being a free single trade area and a single production base by the targeted 2015 deadline and wouldn't want the achievement to be deferred. I mean, I would like ties to look at ASEAN beyond 2015, as many more that lies ahead and needs adjustment, including the harmonization of the regulatory of each country in the aim to facilitate each other. Apart from the need to eliminate non-tariff barriers for ASEAN integration, the private sector is suggested to strengthen its production and supply chain in the region in order to promote Thai trade and service development. For all the parts of the Trade Negotiations Department, we have established an information center for the ASEAN Economic Community in Bangkok called the AEC Information Center, which serves as a hub to answer questions about the economic integration and facilitate information to our business sectors and ordinary people as well. And at the same time, we are also planning to set up branches of the AEC Center throughout the country through provincial commerce affairs offices. Well, people will be able to find information about the AEC on the provincial level as well as find the service products that have potential to tap into the ASEAN market. We have also established alliances with the various networks in many working units, including the Education Ministry, the Thai Chamber of Commerce, and the Federation of Thai Industries. As for the private sector, I would advise them to create a better understanding in our obligations to increase negotiation, because nowadays it is a complicated issue. If they have acquired a good understanding and gained adequate awareness, entrepreneurs will be able to benefit from the integration and be prepared. It may also increase the chance for us to expand investment in the ASEAN market. I think if nothing was done and we just left the chance go by, Thai businesses will not be able to use its competitive capacity to the fullest. It should be a good start for us to make a successfully entrance in the ASEAN market before we can compete in other market arenas after that. We'll take a short break and when towards 2015 comes back, we'll investigate why Thailand is still largely more corrupted than other ASEAN countries.